Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play the Operative No Enlist River and let's get out of this place before we get even more bullet holes. Now the mirror. This must be a bit of the backstage room. Book on criminal psychology by Dr. Melvin Fitzroy, PhD. Okay, oh, here we go. And that must be the, our contact. Well, this should be it then for this mission. Well, let's get it over with. Hmm? Ah, ah, damn. Nope. Oh. I'm not going to die that easily. Yes, actually, accidentally talked to, uh, talked through Kate's uh, dialogue, but not that much, not that big of a deal. Anything in here? It's the room I came from. But thought there was someone, uh, something in there. Hey, I will run into more uh, guys. What's in all those cakes anyway? Beer. We supply Harm's entire staff with the finest Deutsch brews. Really? That must be a lot of beer. Indeed. Our studies show that criminals drink three times as much alcohol as law-abiding citizens. So beer turns people into criminals? A correlation doesn't imply causality. Just because criminals drink a lot of beer doesn't mean that beer causes crime. It's possible that people with criminal tendencies enjoy beer because it helps to soothe their conscience. Or perhaps criminal behavior is caused in part by a genetic predisposition that also, coincidentally, makes criminals like the taste of beer more than the average person. Who knows? You're very knowledgeable about these things. Criminal sociology is a hobby of mine. I think it's important to understand not just the individual psychological roots of one's behavior, but also the social circumstances that foster that behavior. Whether we like it or not, we are shaped by our environment. Surely you're not suggesting that individuals aren't accountable for their actions? Oh no, of course not. Just because we are products of the societies we're born into doesn't absolve us of personal responsibility. Our religions and laws teach us what is right and what is wrong. Frequently, the right choice is the more difficult path to take. It requires sacrifice, self-discipline, patience, virtues that many of us find somewhat lacking in our natures. But what if you're born into a hedonistic culture? Look across history. The reason hedonism is discouraged by most religions and governments is that it weakens a civilization. It breeds sloth, petulance, degeneracy, and selfishness. A divided nation is a fragile nation waiting to be conquered. Unity is strength. Humans instinctively fashion order out of chaos. It is a natural, probably genetic impulse. Therefore, even an individual born into troubled times has the capacity, and even the duty, to behave in a manner that promotes unity, however difficult it may be. Then what about us? I can only speak for myself. I am a product of a broken household, which introduced a general lack of self-confidence in me at a very early age. These feelings of inadequacy blossomed into anger as I matured that the rigors of adolescence with the teasing and abuse and awkwardness we must all endure only exacerbated. But even though I've identified the source of my problems, I'm still too childish and petty to become a responsible, mature citizen. Well, admitting you have a problem is the first step, I suppose. I like to think so. Hey, finally he shot up. <laughs> and criminal with, with uh, an HQ, well, mm, IQ, and a lot of talk. Let's see, can we sneak past here? Be interesting to try. Oh, uh, snipers. Let's try and avoid searchlights. But I'm thinking this will probably end up in a shootout. Did you hear that? Yes. <laughs> See? Let's go. Oh. Come on. Need some armor. Ooh. There we go. It's the second sniper and lots of ammo. Anyone else? Nobody? Come on. The, the fun just got started. That's obviously harm. Oh, armor. Always nice. 
Okay, let's get out of here. Somehow that the rafts stood in one place while we weren't on it. Jesus comes. And I was hoping for her not to sing, but uh, that short, that's yeah, off and white. No bonuses or war. There is a Unity safe house in Bremen, near the docks where you are to rendezvous with Agent Goodman. Stop there on your way and submit a status report to command. You should also equip yourself for the mission ahead. Okay. Somehow report to Santa's workshop. <laughs> What was the name of that nightclub again? Das Einsame Valkyrie. Ah, yes, here it is. The proprietor's name is Wagner, Inga Wagner. Ring any bells? We've got a file on her. She's supposedly a distant relation of Richard Wagner's, although I don't believe that connection has ever been adequately established. Nonetheless, as a child, she was constantly pressured by her parents to become an opera singer, presumably in order to continue the family legacy. The only problem was that she was completely tone deaf. The combination of her parents' unyielding devotion and the inevitable series of rejections she encountered once she began to audition seems to have warped her mind in unhealthy ways. As a young woman, she had several run-ins with the West German authorities, initially involving complaints about her impromptu public concerts, but eventually blossoming into allegations of smuggling, extortion, money laundering, and even murder. It's entirely possible she's fallen in with harm. Find out what you can. Very good, sir. Be careful, Archer. I'll be fine. Okay, let's Welcome see. Welcome to Advanced Field What toys we got now? We've modified your cigarette lighter. It now features a built-in miniature welder. The flame should be just hot enough to cut through padlocks that can't be picked or shot off. Look for locks with dials instead of keyholes. Try welding these locks off. Okay, uh, that makes uh, this a lot more useful. We've developed a new lipstick explosive for you. This one has a three-second timer, which will allow you to bank it around corners or seek cover before it detonates. Always nice to have explosives, whether they're uh, contact or time. I'm so bloody bored. I never have any fun. Me neither. Okay, that was a bit unnecessary. Meet Agent Goodman at the Bremen docks. Your first goal will be to get aboard the cargo freighter. Once aboard, you must locate the captain's log and the shipping manifest. Also, photograph any suspicious chemical containers you find. Okay, let's select our equipment. Okay, a timed explosive. I'm not going to take that. Uh, impact should work better. And we haven't had any use for the body remover yet. So let's skip that one, and let's get started with this. This looks like the place. Now introduction from the medic. Hey, Brady, I want you to meet somebody. This is Keith Miner, the new hire I was telling you about. Nice to meet you, Keith. This is an impressive operation you guys got going here. I hear you used to work over at Misery. Were you involved in that giant laser incident? You heard about that? Heck yeah. We had a betting pool. I was so sure you guys were gonna vaporize the Empire State Building. Oops, I guess I owe you some money then. What happened anyway? We hired some non-union technicians to put in the cooling system. No kidding. It was a nightmare. Tell me about it. It's amazing the whole secret base didn't blow up. Pays to hire professionals. Anyway, welcome aboard, Keith. Good to have you on the team. I appreciate it. I got a good feeling about this organization. Well, I don't. Well, I have to cut the video off in a few seconds.
And a good thing that didn't set off the guards. Because there's a lot of guards around this place. Okay, the coast seems clear. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, is he going to spot me? Yes. And there we go. Oh, come on. There we go. The stupid fence. Uh, lead me damage. There we go. This could be useful, but I'll have to cut the video pretty soon. Any more targets practice? Since we've already got their attention for a bit. Oop, camera. Okay, this has been a Let's Play the Operative Knowledge Forever. See you all next time.